time to move on to the next speaker, who is the executive director of Humanity Plus and recognized as the co-founder of modern transhumanism, Natasha Vitamore. Natasha, over to you. I have to unmute. Good. Uh, can everyone hear me now? Great. Great. OK, thank you, David. And, and thank you, uh, Didier and Mark and the team at Viridian for putting this event together. I'm going to take a different approach. For me, the ecology and life is all about cooperation and a synergistic approach to that. And that's why I love the, the term green of Viridian in that regard. I don't think it's a political issue. I don't think it's an economic issue. I think it's a humanity issue of understanding the need to do what we can do on a daily basis to practice ecology and the Viridian Declaration. I don't see it as an intellectual approach. I don't see it as something that has, that is a point counterpoint. We're all in this together. And I don't even like that phrase. I'm so tired of it, frankly. But that is the tr truth that we live on the same planet here. And we have a lifespan that is precious to us. And we cooperate with other life forms on a moment to moment, nanosecond to nanosecond basis. And unless we can agree on that, we can't agree on anything. So it doesn't matter if you're left, right, up or down, socialist, capitalist, communist, Marxist, I don't give a fuck, basically. And I'm gonna say that loud and clear because I think that is taking us down the wrong road. I think it is pitting us against each other rather than finding solutions to the problem. The problem is we've got number one, in the world, not just in the United States, in the world, the population of elderly people is growing in magnitude. And this is a very serious issue. People over 60 turning 65 are in the United States, 10,000 a day. And that's just a portion of the people in the world that are turning over 60, over 65, wherever you wanna put your middle age spectrum on a chronological basis. That is an issue. And if Japan is trending as far as the older population of people retiring early and the decline in birth rate, there is an issue that is beyond politics. It's about the ecology. It's about the give and take and the dis, uh, distribution of products and people who need products. So then we get to more the architecture of the uh, stratagem, which would um, borrow back into Buckminster Fuller, which was not political, was not ideological, was not anything other than looking architecturally at what works and what doesn't work. And I think that is the best mindset that we can have today in addressing this. If 65 people are turning, uh, if the th 10,000 are turning 65 a day, that's an issue. And if people are retiring earlier, that's an issue. So then we get into what is the real meaning of life? And for this solidarity of ecology, the meaning of life is you, your purposefulness, how much you enjoy life, how long you want to live, how well you want to live. And that is not about money. That is about your own self-worth. It's what you can do with yourself with as much or as little as you have to find a level of compassion and happiness within that. So while the aging population is indeed growing, and we have an issue about retirement and how to take care of people who are retiring, we also need to, at the same time, through a Viridian perspective, find employment work for these people to re-educate, to retrain, so they do have a sense of the environment. Now, uh, on a personal note, I was forced into retirement when I turned 70, and it was a shock to my system, and it was very depressing for me. I couldn't imagine not having a job at work since I was 18, starting businesses, owning businesses. I've never borrowed money from anyone my entire life. I've never taken a handout. Even when I needed it, I'd work three jobs at once just to get by to pay for myself because that's my particular moral belief system. But other people have it differently. 
and that's to be respected too. So we need to find out ways that people who are forced into retirement or have to retirement because of ill health can have a sense of purposefulness that they're doing something. So I think that it's education is the core factor there and how to bring people back into the workforce. And again, I think Japan is kind of our, our blueprint trending on country that is setting an example of what they're doing and how they're doing it. Another consequence here that deals with uh, the issue of population is the birth decline. Birth rates are declining in many countries around the world as people are getting older. So this to me is a core issue for the Viridian Declaration and the Viridian mindset. How are we going to address this? The technologists, as Noel Watson was saying, uh, are coming up with artificial intelligence, robotics, automation, machine learning, uh, different ways to approach that. But that's not for everyone. Let's stay in our lane of expertise and figure out what we can do to collaboratively and conjointly work together on this issue rather than causing divisiveness or blaming other people for the problem. It doesn't matter who caused the problem. The problem is here. So I say, let's so uh, find solutions. Checking my time. Uh, David, give me a time check, please. I think I have. You are doing fine. You've got uh, about nine minutes left. Good. I just want to be respectful of, of everyone's time here. So those are my key points in finding a solidarity in the issue of the environment and what we can do to bring about <clears throat> better energy sources. We really don't know what they are. Uh, photovoltaic cells are extremely expensive. Why is that? I'm not sure I know. It's not my area of expertise, but I do understand that economics is one of the most important areas for us to focus on, not politics. And if we look at economics through the lens of a diverse spectrum of thinkers, again, diverse spectrum of thinkers that all have something to offer from their various levels of knowledge and expertise, I would highly recommend reading Max Border's book on the collapse. It's a very interesting book. It doesn't take any one political position, but, uh, but addresses the issues uh, more, I think, through the, the lens of objectivity with, a, with an incredible sense of humor. So that's how I see it. I see it as is being beyond politics, beyond being hegemony, beyond being uh, beyond fields, but doing something on a daily basis, each of us picking up someone else's trash, just throw it away, don't get all caring on anyone, don't go yelling, oh, they did it, they, they're, they're to blame, just do whatever we can on a daily basis to help. And I'm gonna close out with um, um, a short video I made many years ago. I was talking to Didier about this. I started working with the environment in the 1970s when I created, um, I went to the Amazon jungle in 1973 and I did a, a performance piece there in as a Fluxus art piece um, with the natives in the jungle. I don't have any recordations of it because it was before, um, we just didn't do it back then. It was, was anti-Andy Warhol. Um, but I was in the jungle, I went into the Amazon jungle up the Black River, and I settled in an area of a tribe of, of natives there. And it was it charming and delightful. And I looked over the, 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 the cusp of the trees and I saw the first factory in the Amazon jungle. Again, this is in the early 1970s. That inspired me to do other works, uh, Red Rocks Amphitheater, many of you know about, uh, breaking away from the constraints of, of dogma, um, Haleakala, waking goddess, sleeping goddess, waking muse about the dormant volcano after I lost my baby. And um, I did a performance in that volcano. It is on 16 millimeter film. Uh, that volcano is no longer dormant and it is undergoing some ecological problems with its environment and its life forms there that I'm very concerned about. I'm um, in Austin, Texas. I worked with the the, the greens there and um, the uh, environmentalists in Austin looking at the, the beauty of the landscape in Austin, which is largely limestone, um, exquisite environment that is undergoing some very serious issues now that Austin has become one of the hot spots in the world to live. There's not enough energy there to sustain that environment. Um, to um, other projects indeed, but I've always approached the environment as a beautiful 
theatrical space with the sunset and the sunrise and the ocean and the waves and the beauty of it. And it saddens me deeply to see that being destroyed by pollution. So my issue is not so much energy because it's not my area of expertise, but it's about the mess and the gluttony and the um, absurdity of it all. And with that, uh, thank you very much. And I'll close my film and I will share the screen here. It's just a very short piece. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to, well, I better start it first before I share screen because then I can't do it. Um, start from the beginning. Oh, no, I can't do that either. So I'll share screen and uh, share and I'll start the video right here. Before I do that, I'm gonna turn the volume way up. Okay, so forgive me here. Okay, there, from beginning. There's no sound coming through, Natasha. You may have to. Has... Ah. Quantum physics bypass the concept of the world as sitting up there. The universe will never be the same. Um, each experiences came to life, cascades of energy from outer space, particles created and destroyed in the stance. <laughs> Hassel recalled a dream. He heard two distinct voices. The first told to calm. The second voice, like a primal cause, suffering only hurts because you fear it. Conflict, pain, paradox, transformations trying to happen. Deep within you, there is only one, a single power, and that is called loving. So um, I just have just a short piece of the of the the film itself, but it's um, it was uh, premiered in the 1983 1993 excuse me um, film festival, and uh, in Washington D.C. and um, I'll turn I'll stop sharing my screen now. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Stop stop sharing there. Sorry, forgive me. Um, but I think that is the sentiment that I have about it. And I'm looking, David, I think I have 30 seconds left. Um, just do your own thing, enjoy it, have fun with it. Um, set out the words, whether it's poetry or film or, or um, writing, uh, and realize that it's, it's bigger than, than these, these small mind issues that we have. And I, I hope that you all realize that. Um, as you know, I have been politically involved, but I'm not now and I have no interest in it because I think that economics, the, looking at the economic structures that we have exceeds political positioning so far. And I agree with James Hughes in that we do need a better social standard where there is equity amongst all people. And I think that's the one aim that we should all strive for while doing everything we can to pick up the mess that we make in our environment. And thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Natasha. You have inspired a lot of very interesting comments in the chat. And if we start well, I'm there, to look. <laughs> if we start there, we're, we're going to take a long, long time indeed. Comments by Rohit Talwar, James Hughes, Didier Cornell, PNJ, and others. Let's say uh, leave that for a discussion in the chat and possibly some of the workshops afterwards. Uh, as we, well, it's incredible imagery there. I've got to try and move on to the next speaker, who is actually Didier Cornell, uh, one of the, the central players in the French transhumanist movement worldwide, coming to